Hello, I'm Josh Savage with Uptown Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. And today I'm going to answer for you the top 10 most common questions that were asked about furnace and air conditioning systems. The number one question that we're asked is, is how long should we expect a furnace and air conditioner to last? And the industry average is about 15 to 17 years. Now a poorly installed product or a poor quality product might last 5 to 10 years. And a, a high quality product and a good quality installation might last over 25 years but the average in our industry is in 15 to 17 years. Um, next question is, is what can be done about humidification in our home? Typically in a lot of the homes that we're in we find one of two scenarios. Is, is that either a home has a lot of portable small humidifiers, especially if there's small children in the house or people with respiratory issues. And then the other common situation that we find is, is that they'll have an old humidifier it's still hooked up to the system and they really don't know if it works or they assume it hasn't worked for a number of years. In either of those scenarios, um, a whole house central humidification system is a great solution. Um, it, it, it's very cost effective. It provides even humidification throughout the entire house and maximizes the amount of humidity that you can add to a house without over humidifying it. Uh, the technology today and the controls that control it have come a long ways in the last 20 years. Uh, another question that we're asked is, is, how does the size of the new unit compare to the old unit? Are they going to be a lot smaller? Now, furnaces, the, the furnaces themselves are a smaller footprint and they're smaller in size, but they're still going to connect into the same ductwork. But they will take up a little bit less space inside your mechanical room. Now, your air conditioner outside might actually, your new one might actually be larger than your old one. And that's because of efficiency. The more efficient a system is, the larger the outside unit becomes. And so some of the old, old units that we see, maybe from the early 1980s, were really small units, but very inefficient. Now, the newer, more efficient systems have larger outdoor units, but typically they'll always slide back into the same location that the old air conditioning units sat in. Uh, another common question is, is, you know, we currently use 3M filters, uh, for our furnace and we're seeing you know are there any other better options out there uh, to, to filter the air in our house and definitely when you're installing a new furnace you've got the opportunity to install a better filter and the reason one of the easiest reasons for that is is that now we're modifying some of the ductwork at your furnace itself and because of that we're able to add in a larger filter cabinet to put in a bigger filter and some of these bigger filters don't really cost that much more uh, to, to, to operate or to replace each year, but they only have to be replaced once or twice a year versus every month, and they actually improve the indoor air quality of your house significantly and reduce the amount of dust and, and other allergens that are floating through your air. Another question is, is how much more efficient is a new furnace and air conditioner versus our old system? And of course, that depends on your old system and how old it really is. But typically, most furnaces are somewhere in 65 to 75 percent efficiency if they're at least 15 to 20 years old. And then the outside air conditioning systems today are, you know, you know, one and a half to two times as efficient as some of the really old ones out there. And so, there's significant gains to be had on efficiency if your furnace and air conditioner is over 15 or 20 years old. Um, thermostat options. What sort of thermostats are out there today? And there's a lot of neat thermostats. Of course, you have programmable thermostats. You have thermostats out there that are easier to read and easier to operate with touch screens. But then you also have thermostats that actually can be controlled by a smartphone. And there is some novelty to that as far as you know, the ability to be able to see what the temperature inside your house is you know, and change it before you get home. And there's some real world function to it too. Uh, you might be down uh, in Florida for a week in the middle of March, and you might be watching the news and see, ah, it's minus 20 degrees in Minnesota. Gosh, I wonder if my heating system's working. And you're able to look at your phone real quick and see that your house is still 65 degrees inside your living room. Ah, peace of mind. Versus wondering if maybe your old system went out and it's maybe 45 degrees in your living room. Now the other nice thing is, is that maybe in that same trip to Florida, 
you're gone for a week and you're on your way home and when you're near airport in Fort Myers, you're able to turn the heat up to 70 degrees so it's really warm and comfortable once you get home. Uh, that's another benefit of a, a, a Wi-Fi enabled thermostat. Another question is, is you know, our basement is pretty cold in the winter time. Uh, is there anything we can do about that? Uh, one thing that you can do is we can add more supply vents and more return vents to a basement. That's usually pretty simple to do and uh, greatly improves the comfort. Because typically a basement is, you know, four to eight degrees cooler than the main floor. And just by adding some more supply registers and return registers, we're able to improve the comfort greatly. And another common question that we hear is, is how do you determine the proper size furnace and air conditioner for your home, for their home? And that's done by properly sizing the equipment. And we do what's recommended by the state of Minnesota and Con Consumer uh, Digest and uh, the Department of Energy. And what that is is that you do a manual J calculation. And what that means is you take a bunch of measurements of the house and of uh, the windows, of the doors, and the outside walls, and you put it into a software program, and that tells you how much heat is needed to heat the house. And then we size up and we make sure that whatever size furnace and air conditioner we use lines up with the amount of heating or cooling needs uh, that the house has that way. There's old rules of thumb of square footage and of uh, uh, you know, sizing into the old unit and stuff like that, but those are relatively ineffective ways to do it. And if you don't size it properly, your system is going to wear out faster and not give you the efficiency that it's rated for. Another common question is, is how, long does a, uh, how long does a typical installation take? Now, typically, it takes about a day to install your average furnace and air conditioning system. Usually, we get to your house somewhere between 7 and 7.30 in the morning, and then somewhere between 2 and 4 in the afternoon, the whole thing's up and running. So it's a pretty simple uh, operation that way. We take out all your old equipment, we recycle it, and um, make it hassle-free that way. I hope you found this is helpful, and if there's any other questions, feel free to give us a call. Thanks.